Welcome to the lecture on catalytic organometallics. This is part 23 and subject of today are some modern di dehydrogenation reactions. So, The first process we want to discuss today is a photochemical process which uh, has been intensively studied from a mechanistic point of view, kinetics and so on. Physical chemists were the one who studied it first. That was around 1960 and it is connected with a photochemical induced reaction with mercury, elemental mercury as, at, as a catalyst. Mercury photosensitization is the term that is in use. As I said, already studied by physical chemists uh, around 1960. And then this reaction was reinvented by the famous Crabtree group around uh, 1985, I think. And uh, they had more in focus what you can preparatively achieve achieved with this type of uh, uh, reaction. Later on, it was then called the Mercat process. So, <coughs> if you irradiate mercury best in the gas phase, Well, with a wavelength of 254 nanometers, this is the wavelength of the light emitted by low pressure mercury lamps. So then you get mercury in the excited state, and this excited state is on an energy level 112 kcal per mole above the ground state. So, and now if we compare this 112 kcal per mole with the bond energy, for instance, of a typical CH bond that is about 100 kcal per mole depends whether the uh, carbon centered radical is stabilized or not and it depends on uh, <coughs> of course, the, the hybridization. Mm. On the other hand, a CC bond, there the bond energy is less than 90 kcal per mole. So that means you can, of course, break a CC bond much easier than a CH bond, at least thermally. So, you know, the cracking process. The cracking process where you have uh, uh, alkanes and heat them up always leads to a carbon carbon breakage of, of uh, those bonds, 
and not to a CH bond cleavage. Otherwise, the product of the cracking process always would be hydrogen and charcoal. This is, as you know, not the case. Yeah? So, <coughs> the um <coughs> irradiated mercury can deliver its energy onto these bonds and leads to a breaking of those bonds. Since the CH bonds at the surface are easier accessible, these are the ones that will break. So, what is observed then? Some alkane reacts in the gas, fa ga gas phase with uh, the <coughs> irradiated mercury. It delivers its energy. Well, and you get a carbon-centered radical plus the radicalic hydrogen. These then can recombine, well, back to the starting material, but of course also under CC bond formation, and then you will also get molecular hydrogen. And of course, you will have some competing reactions, disproportionation reaction reactions you should already know from Organic Chemistry 1 lecture. So, one carbon-centered radical grabs a radicalic hydrogen from another carbon-centered radical, will form that again, and an olefin, of course. So, this has been studied by those uh, physical chemists, for instance, for this reaction, an oxidative dimerization producing molecular hydrogen. And as I said, it was further developed for preparative applications by the Crabtree group at Yale University. So, they used initially a rather simple apparatus. Well, something like that. Quartz glass. Here it was heated up. And with a steer bar, it was steered, they added a drop, small droplet of mercury. Up here, they had a reflux condenser. Hydrogen is developed through the course of a reaction. Then, we had those mercury, mercury lamps attached, and, uh, well, that's uh, the rather simple setup. 
Well, if you heat that, sometimes we used an additional hydrogen stream to get that stuff into the gas phase. However, heating it up, you will have mercury vapor, rather low concentration is enough. It's a fast reaction. And the vapor of uh, that stuff you have here. And of course, if the oxidative dimerization occurs, then the dimer is heavier than the starting material and its concentration will increase until, well, maybe all of its stuff has been transformed, oxidatively dimerized. So, what can you achieve with this type of reaction? Done on a multigram scale, generally. So, starting from cyclohexane, you will get this dimerization product. Well, also rather sterically hindered products It's clear this bond has been synthesized during the process. Here it is this central CC bond. The reaction also works quite nicely with uh, well hydroxyl groups in the presence of hydroxyl groups and amino groups then the, th the CH activation always precedes alpha to the heteroatom. Therefore you can synthesize pinnacles like this Or another nice example is the one with those two CF3 groups. Another example reported obviously started from cyclopentylamine. giving rise to this bisamine, one to bisamine product. Well, most interestingly, also cross-coupling reactions become possible. For instance, This hydroxymethyl THF was produced from THF and methanol mixture. Well, of course, you have as a byproduct the bis THF and simply ethylene glycol, but since all those products have much different polarity, you can easily separate them from each other. So, this bond was formed during that Mercat process. Another nice example is this one. So, the starting materials in that case are pyrrolidine and trioxane, two rather cheap starting materials. This is especially interesting because if you hydrolyze 
this uh, moiety here, well, it is an acetal, then you will get to an aldehyde, of course. Well, in a more recent publication, also from the Crabtree group, published in JAX 1991, two page 2233, they also reported some yields for uh, optimized reaction conditions. And these yields are often very good. So, oxidative dimerization product from butyro nitrile, 94%, from cyclopentene. Pentenone, 68 percent. This is already a rather low yield for a Mercat reaction. Obviously, also cyclohexyl carboxylic acid esters react again 94% as reported yield this example I found rather intriguing One could guess where the CH activation will occur here in alpha position or in the alpha position of the heteroatom. Wow, well, at the alpha position of the heteroatom, and again. 94%. So for this N alkane, hexane, you could in principle get the CH activation at the terminal position or at these two internal positions and the product mixture which was obtained has been analyzed These, these dimerization products have been identified besides some olefinic byproducts. These in the range 23 to 45 to 21 and to well, 11. So activation at the terminal position is uh, somewhat less favored. Well, okay primary radicals are less stabilized. Well, there are some limitations of this Mercat process. 
Well, you might already have noticed that we have nowhere an example with uh, an aromatic partial structure. Okay. So, aromatic systems inhibit the Mercat process. Well, it is explained uh, by Carptree that then the energy transfer is easier to the uh, aromatic system, to the aromatic pi system. Next subject is also dehydrogenation, but not for CC bond formation in general, but for forming olefins. So, we have such an alkane, and we would like to make this transformation dehydrogenation and having then an olefin preferentially at the terminal position those are somewhat more interesting for a lot of applications than those with the internal bond. So you know those with the internal double bond are thermodynamically preferred, so it would be nice if we would get an access through these kind of processes uh, to the terminal olefins, alpha olefins. So you have some problems with this type of reaction. This type of reaction is, of course, always endothermic. So that means you have somehow to put in energy. We've seen that and putting in energy by photochemistry. You can thermally induce this type of process with catalyst and elevated temperatures. Maybe 150 200 degrees, as we will see later on. So, you can drive this reaction to completion if you trap the hydrogen. Would be nice if you could do that with uh, an appropriate oxidizing agent. The cheapest would be molecular oxygen. Then you, unfortunately, have the problem that you have to work with an oxygen alkane mixture. These are, well, if you ignite those, yeah, somewhat uh, explosive, of course. Yeah, you, you want to avoid that on the large scale. Okay? So, instead of uh, molecular oxygen, then as test reaction in the lab, other olefins were added and, uh, well, simply trying a transfer hydrogenation. For instance, One test reaction is cyclooctane plus this olefin. Catalyst, thermally induced. synthesizing cyclooctane and one equivalent of hydrogen H2 is transformed. Here you have your olefin, there then the alkane. 
So, also Crabtree was one of the first who was working in that area, concentrating uh, on iridium catalysts. Initially, these, this type of reactions uh, were studied, to my knowledge, with uh, rhodium catalyst due to the CH activation in combination with uh, carbonyl insertion reactions. We have studied those types of uh, reactions, or discussed those types of reactions uh, already. And then uh, iridium complexes for that type of reaction turned out to be far more active. Well, Crabtree and Falcon's group, they started in the 17s, in the 70s, um, with those iridium catalysts, simple structured iridium catalysts, and uh, they started with turnover numbers, about 10. This is, of course, not enough for iridium catalysis. Well, they could improve until they were at a turnover number of uh, about 70. But then, in 1996, Jensen published a far more active iridium catalyst. It was a pincer type catalyst. Tertiary butyl substituted phosphine pincer type iridium complex. These pincer type complexes are known to be rather robust. Well, and indeed, for this transfer hydrogenation, this catalyst. Well, was found to have a turnover number of 12 per minute. Okay, 12 turnovers per minute at 200 degrees, and you can let that reaction run for a week, and uh, the activity does not decree decrease. It is rather stable at 200 degrees. So this pincer type catalyst was, of course, further modified. Now to isopropyl substituted phosphonyl groups. And the iridium in another oxidation state. So, <coughs> with this catalyst, For instance, cyclodecane was dehydrogenated. You get a mixture of the trans and the cis olefin. You can, you don't need this. Um, Olefin for the transfer hydrogenation. You can remove the hydrogen. Yeah, well, simply it is in the gas phase and you, you pump it off. Well, 
and uh, a turnover number of uh, this process was found to be around 1,000. With this type of uh, catalyst, also and alkanes have been tested. For instance, octane, which then gave one octene and the cis and trans isomer of a two octene with a selectivity of up to to one. Let us go on with some recent developments with uh, generally those pincer type iridium but also ruthenium complexes. Also, alcohols can be dehydrogenated. And R or R prime works also if R prime is hydrogen. So that means that you can also use primary alcohols for the synthesis of aldehydes. One example, oh, I think it, it is from Milstein's group, at the Weizmann Institute. So, it is also an oxidative dimerization where two equivalents of molecular hydrogen are eliminated. Forming an ester with essentially quantitative yield. The catalyst which is applied also, the pincer type one, ruthenium, catalyst, carbonyl group, and one hydrogen. So, to achieve that 99% uh, yield, reaction conditions are six hours in toluene at reflux temperature with just 0.1% of this ruthenium catalyst. Imagine that you have two hydroxyl groups in your molecule and you would perform this type of reaction intramolecularly, then you can imagine that uh, with this method you can easily synthesize uh, well, a broad variety of lactones.
same reaction conditions, almost same reaction conditions. Oh well, it is. Oh well, three hours instead of uh, uh, six hours, but this is almost the same. Yeah? Applied for a cross coupling reaction. with a primary alcohol and a primary amine, then gives the corresponding amides also with up to 99% yield. Another research group in that uh, field then changed to iridium complexes, CP star, iridium dichloride, which forms a coordination dimer, 1% catalyst is sufficient for combining two equivalents of this alcohol with one equivalent of ammonium tetrafluoroborate D delivering the nitrogen. This reaction then resulted in the formation of a secondary amine with 98%. This type of amine alkylation was tested at an example from pharmaceutical industry. Well, it was tested in the pharmaceutical industry by Pfizer. on a large scale so this structure of a pyrrolidine with a cyclopropane unit annihilated was combined with a benzylic amine fluoro and chloro functionalized. Again, the same catalyst as in the example before. In that case, oh, well, we wanted to diminish the catalyst loading because we did that reaction on rather large scale with 2.4 kilograms of that material. We applied the iridium catalyst with uh, a loading of 0 0.033 mole percent. Well, rather high concentration 500 milliliters of toluene at 110 degrees. Well, a turnover number 
of uh, more than 1,500 was calculated. So second step, this was first step, second step, uh, the product was isolated by just uh, forming the hydrogen chloride salt, which crystallizes from uh, <coughs> EPA. Well, and the structure of a product should be clear. This one, 76% yield, corresponding to 4.8 kilograms. Two more examples, this time from the groups of, uh, from the group of Ramon and Yus, Spanish groups published in 2006. They combine two alcohols. During dehydrogenation, this one can form an enol as a nucleophile. This one is activated with hydroxyl group as a leaving group. And therefore, you can achieve a CC bond formation from here to there. There's no hydrogen developed, the hydrogen goes back into the molecule, so the structure of a product then is this one. Ninety-eight percent yield. So, with a ruthenium dichloride, ruthenium 2 chloride, stabilized with DMSO, 2 mole percent applied, you need basic reaction conditions, KOH, two equivalents, dioxane, as the solvent, 100 degrees, well, it's a rather slow reaction, seven days, but the 98% yield is quite convincing, I think. Same. Secondary allylic, uh, secondary benzylic alcohol as starting material. Now, another benzylic alcohol, this one, the amino functionalized as coupling, second coupling component, same catalyst, same concentration, the base, well, also dioxane, but uh, three days at 100 degrees. 
So, what will be the result in that case? We certainly should get CC bond formation from here to there in analogy to that process. Well, maybe we should simply write down the product we would anticipate in analogy to the first reaction. this one. But remember, as I said, to activate this as a nucleophile with a nucleophilic center here, you need the ketone or basic conditions, the enolate. And to get to this product, the hydrogen has to be here, well, <coughs> get into the molecule again, reducing that alcohol. So, but intermediary, you have that carbon in a higher oxidation state, an oxidation state of a carbonyl group. So, this should be an intermediate, and then, of course, a condensation process will occur with an imine formation and now it should be clear with the di dehydrogenation catalyst should be easy to oxidize these centers finally producing the aromatic system the phenylquinoline two phenylquinoline and indeed this is the product final product of that process and again obtained with almost quantitative yield. So, uh, enough for today. Subject of tomorrow are other aspects of CH activation, where we will discuss um, some results of methanol, methane oxidation to methanol, alkanes to alkanols, and uh, finally we will talk tomorrow about uh, the borrelation mainly developed by the Hartwig group. Thank you for listening. See you tomorrow.